ice fishing in California. I'm not joking. Hi, my name's Pat. I'm with Pat's Guide Service, and we're out here on Lake Davis in California, and we are doing some ice fishing. I've been ice fishing for about 15 years. I started when a buddy of mine took me out who'd been ice fishing for about 20 years, and he introduced me to the sport, and I was hooked from the beginning. I've been guiding for ice fishing for about seven years. I began because I was taking a lot of people ice fishing. And finally, I took a guide ice fishing on his day off. And he said, you should be an ice fishing guide. So I took his advice and here we are. This is an example of the kind of fish you can catch when you're ice fishing. This is a gorgeous little cutthroat trout. Really good to eat as well. Before you get out on the ice, one of the most important things you can learn is ice safety. Learning how to judge the ice thickness and conditions is critical to safely recreating on the ice, whether it be ice fishing, ice skating. There are numerous ice safety videos on the internet. I highly encourage you to watch some of them. It's important to make sure the ice is safe. There's a myriad of safety equipment you can purchase to be out on the ice. One of the most important is some flotation. This is a striker ice fishing suit. It has flotation built into it. So if you do fall through the ice, it'll help you float and then extricate yourself out of the ice. Another very important tool are ice picks. They just go around your neck, pull them apart. They have very sharp spikes. If you're floating in the water because you're wearing your flotation and your arms are on the ice, you can ice picks to pull yourself out to give you something to grip they're a pretty important safety device they can just stay around your neck all the time when you're on the ice a throw rope to be able to throw to your buddy or for your buddy to throw to you or somebody else that goes to the ice good piece of safety equipment to always have a spud bar this one's built into this ice dipper for chipping through the ice close to the shore where the water depth is shallow so you can safely assess the ice to make sure it's thick enough to support you and go out and have a good time fishing. When you get on the ice, if it's glare ice, having some chains for your boots is very helpful in getting some traction. There's a bunch of different manufacturers of these to give you a little bit of extra grip on the ice. Having some trekking poles is a good idea. They give you a couple extra points of contact and if you're pulling a sled with all your stuff in it out onto the ice these help you push your way forward. Great pieces of safety gear. In order to check that ice thickness you're going to need a auger and an auger can be either a hand auger. These are relatively inexpensive pretty easy way to start or you can get an electric or gas powered auger. You'll need these to drill your hole in the ice to check at the edge and as you progress out on the ice to make sure you maintain safe ice thickness and you'll also need them to put your hole in the ice so that you can catch some fish. Once you safely get out on the ice the basic gear you need is an ice fishing rod. These can be purchased as a combo you can get a rod, reel, and line fairly inexpensively at many retailers throughout the state and online. A good bucket is helpful for carrying your gear around. A chair, like this folding camp chair, it's pretty nice. Or you can sit on your bucket. Basic tackle, such as small jigs, spoons. You can use bait, worms, power bait, all the things that you would use to catch fish during the summertime also work in the wintertime. Once you have your gear and you're set up, as you may or may not be able to tell, we're inside now. This is an ice hut. The 
it's also collapsible, foldable, and it can provide nice protection from the wind, snow, whatever you got going on outside the elements. The benefit to these shorter ice fishing rods is when you're sitting in your shack, such as this one, or out on the ice, and you're fishing in your hole, you can keep the tip of your rod close to the hole, and all of the action stays up above the hole. So when you're fighting the fish, you can control it a lot better. Some people do start with traditional length poles, but these ice fishing rod and reels make life a lot easier, especially if you're inside a hut like this one, which we're in today because of the wind, not so much because of the snow or the cold. If it is cold outside, you can grab a heater. These shelters have air ventilation. Getting a carbon monoxide detector inside while you're using a heater, similar to a little buddy heater or one of those catalytic heaters. You can fish in comfort even when you're ice fishing. There are a variety of equipment that you can purchase that will help increase your enjoyment of ice fishing. A fish finder, such as this Humminbird Ice 45 is a flasher there are other companies that make flashers that helps you check the water depth below the ice and it lets you know whether there are any fish in the area as well Another tool, especially here in California, if you purchase a second rod stamp that is very useful is the Jigging Jaw Jacker. So how does one go about finding a good place to fish on the ice? Most of the lakes that freeze safely enough to ice fish are at higher elevations all throughout the Sierra Nevada and California. Most tackle shops We'll be able to tell you, especially in the Sierras, which lakes are prone to freeze and therefore be safe to ice fish. The same lakes freeze pretty much every year all throughout the state. The lakes that freeze in our area where I guide are all around the Tahoe area in California and in Nevada. The ones that I fish are lakes such as Frenchman, Davis, Silver Lake, down by Kirkwood area. South Lake, Caples Lake, Red Lake. Near my Truckee area, I fish Prosser, Boca. Occasionally, the ice will freeze safe enough to fish on Stampede Reservoir if you can get out there. If you're still feeling intimidated about getting out on the ice, do a little bit of research on the internet. There are a ton of YouTubers out there that give great ideas about different gear selection, species you can target, areas that you can think about trying to go fish. And just because somebody's doing an ice fishing video from Canada doesn't mean some of those tips and techniques can't apply to the same species here in California. Before going out onto your local lake, always check with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife website to check the regulations for that specific lake that you're planning to fish on. Make sure you're staying legal, following the rules. If you have any questions about ice fishing and you'd like to get some more information, please feel free to give me a call. You can check out my website at patsguideservice.com. You can give me a call at 530-536-0636. Or you can check out my Instagram at patsguideservice. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And get you out there on the ice. If you're still feeling a little bit uncomfortable, feel free to give me a call and we can book you a day on the ice and teach you how to get out on the ice safely and chase after fish on the hard water.